Hello, Scorpio viewers. When to look into your situation. So this could be, it's whatever the cards want to say. Um, could be love, could be money. Could be about a uh, psychic awakening. I know some of you are going through dark nights of the soul and psychic awakening processes right now. Um, could be about an old person, a new person. It's just whatever story wants to come out, whatever the spirit guides for this group want to say. We have magic, manifestation, intention, power. So you're leveling up is the energy that I get from this. There's some kind of... Um, I got that for another zodiac sign too. I forget which one it was. I feel like it was Aries, I think. But um, for, for you guys too, I feel like you're getting some kind of spiritual or psychic gift within the next few weeks. I feel like you're leveling up. Some of you have been dabbling with magic and you're starting to um, really step into your power. Like you're starting, I feel like some of you are like um, studying something, something that's probably connected to like the spiritual world, to the occult, to um, something that would be creative, something artistic, something like uh, like magic or tarot or something like that. And I feel like it's going to be really successful for you. I feel like your spirit guides are also going to be rewarding you for going down this spiritual path. It's like you've learned. I feel like you're either about to wrap up a karmic cycle or you just have wrapped up a karmic cycle and you're going to be blessed for that. I feel like you learned a lesson. So this lesson may be connected to like taking your power back. You know, you see this energy where she's like, she's focused here. She is focused on something right now. They're focused on this light inside of themselves, their own magic, their own intention, power, their ability to manifest you know, it's like someone is, is taking their power back. Someone is, is studying magic or studying the spiritual world, um, studying tarot, psychic work, you know, things, things of that nature. And you have spirit guides around you that are really proud of you and they're rewarding you for going down that path. They're rewarding you for doing something. This might have been something you were scared to do before. Um, and this could be like art because I feel like creative energy too. Like for some of you, this could be like studying guitar or like studying something that you always put off, like you never had time for it. And now you're at this point where you're like, you know what? I want to go ahead and pick this hobby up. I want to go ahead and pursue this. But whatever it is, it's like you're you're focusing on something. You're focusing on some kind of area of study some kind of area of knowledge and your spirit guides are really proud of you. And I feel like they're going to reward you for that. Like it's going to open whatever this is you're studying. It's going to open some doors for you. It's basically the energy I get. Yeah. Cause you've been trapped and blocked and tied up and you've been sad. And I think now you're finding that light. Because I just see this light that's really coming through. Because I channel primarily. I mean, I use the cards as like a visual for you guys and for myself just to like, you know, to understand and everything. But it's like I just see this light in both these, both these, these um, cards. This could be your person too. It could be that your person didn't really have a lot of faith in you or in the relationship. Like they were kind of in a dark place. They were going through a dark night of the soul. And now they're coming out of that. Now they're tired of being sad. They're tired of being an eight of swords energy. So they're choosing what makes them happy, which is you. But for others, basically, I see like a, an end of a cycle. A karmic cycle is ending and a new destined cycle is beginning. So either for you or your person or for both of you, this could be a twin flame connection where you guys are mirroring each other. So you're both kind of going through like a dark night of the soul at the same time. But then you're also going through the psychic awakening at the same time. But it's like whoever it is, you know, whether it was you or your person or both of you, someone was just kind of trapped. Someone was like someone had all these toxic cords around them. They were giving their power away to like psychic vampires or to just the wrong things. They were trapped in these karmic cycles. They didn't even realize how trapped they were. They didn't see, you know, see, she doesn't even see he or she does not even see this red thread because they have the blindfold on. They don't even realize that they're trapped. They think it's just a normal part of life. Um, so it's like eight of swords energy pain, but someone's coming out of this, you know, either you're coming out of this period of sadness and loneliness or your person is, or both of you are, it's like, you're both coming into the light together. I feel like you had to go inward. You had to do the shadow work to kind of learn to merge the darkness and light. You know, you can't have one without the other, but I see a really beautiful shift here for, for a specific person or for a relationship where someone's coming out of this energy and this eight of swords kind of energy and coming into, you know, what makes them happy, uh, you know, taking their power back, using their intuition, 
choosing, you know, warmth, light, choosing what makes, choosing what makes, you know, their heart happy. I hear what makes their heart sing. I don't know if that's relevant for somebody. Um, so I don't usually talk like that. So, <laughs> um, as I always say too, if you want a private reading, you know, I can go more in depth into your specific situation, what your person's feeling, thinking, wanting, whatever details you want to know, just send me an email. My email is right below in the description box below this video. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. But yeah, you can just you can just check the description box to copy and paste it if you need help with the spelling on it on it. Um, any donations are appreciated. Even just a dollar, my donation links are below. I really appreciate it. Really adds up. And I thank you guys so much for that. It really does help me a lot. Um and yeah, please subscribe, please like, please share if this is resonating with you. We got miscommunication, overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotaging, domination, control. Let me put these cards up here so you can see them better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I think that was one specific story. I think this is like. I think I feel like this is like a continued story. I feel like. I feel like your spirit guides wanted to start off by letting you know that you're coming out of this because they probably didn't want to show you all this and have you get stressed out because a lot of you are going through like a lot of pain or anger, or um just like dark night of the soul kind of energy or your person has been going through that darkness. And so some of you are kind of frustrated. You're feeling like alone. You're feeling, you know, like impatient, upset. Um, so I feel like your spirit guides did not want to start out with, with all this heavy energy. They wanted to, um, to let you know, like, Hey, don't worry. Like, I know it's, I know you've been in the eight of swords, but you're coming out of it now and you're coming out of it because you chose to take your power back. You might have just cut somebody out. You might have cut cut out like a toxic ex or a toxic best friend or someone that you really loved, but they kept hurting you. Um, someone that just wasn't really right for you. Some some of you, for some like those in third party situations, either your person just ended a karmic relationship or you just ended your a karmic relationship so that you can go move on to be with your true love, with your destined person like your soulmate or twin flame. I'm picking up strong twin flame energy. I'm picking up different energies. Like there's toxic people, but I also feel some really good energies. Like you met your twin flame or you're close to meeting them. Like I feel like twin flame energy here. So that's really good. Um, and, and you know what? You don't have to be with your twin flame either. Keep that in mind. Like it's your choice. Some people choose to be with soulmates because you have multiple, multiple potential life partners. So you don't have to be with your twin flame unless you want to be. Twin flame relationships can be totally chaotic. So it's up to you. Your guides are not going to fault you, in my opinion, if you choose to go with a soulmate instead of a twin flame. So it's up to you. But I feel positive energy here. I feel like the old person, for those of you that wrapped up a cycle with somebody, I feel like, or, or your person wrapped up a cycle, I feel like that person might have been a false twin flame. And now that you've moved on, you or them has moved on from the real, from the false twin flame, you can now have the real twin flame instead. Because often you meet the false twin flame before you meet the real twin flame. But, um, but yeah, anyway, it's like your, your guides really wanted to, to give you, it's like, I feel like you cry sometimes, or your person cries and your spirit guides are there with you, reassuring you like you're not alone, you're loved. You might have a soul group in the higher realms, like maybe in this lifetime, you just didn't feel close to anybody, like you didn't feel like. You had a family or close friends, like you feel like you're all on your own. And it's possible that you come from the fairy realm or from one of the other higher realms. And a lot of your soul group is is in the higher realms there, still. And you came to Earth for a specific mission. Like you came to Earth to be a healer. You have certain um, soul contracts to fulfill here on Earth that you need to fulfill. But I mean, after this life, I feel like you get to go home and be re reunited with your soul group. But that doesn't mean that your soul group won't won't channel through other people here on earth. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be alone. Like you probably do have some people from your soul group that are here with you on earth, you know, or that you're going to meet. But it's just like a lot of your soul group, like, like, like half of them or so, or maybe I don't, I don't know the exact percentage, but like, let's say half of them for a lot of you are in the higher realms. So some of you are like, dude, like I never felt like close to my dad or my mom. And it's like, well, that's not your actual dad. That's not your soul father. That's when I say like a soul father or soul mother, I mean, that's not the person that was your father or your mother in your past lives. That's somebody that was just like a karmic lesson. Like they were your parent this life, but like you're not going to see the next lifetime. You know what I mean? Like your real soul father or soul mother is, is up in the higher realms and you get to see them after this lifetime, after you fulfilled your, your karmic duties here. 
Um, and that's not for everybody. That's just for a few of you. And it's nothing to freak out about. It's, it's a really beautiful energy, you know, because you, you, did, you did agree to come here. You did agree to do certain things. But just know that you're not alone. Because I feel like some people in this group are like, you know, like, why the hell did I never find my people? And it's like, well, you, you have your soul group. You do. Everybody does. It's just that some of, pe some of the people in your soul group are not here on Earth. But th like I said, they'll still channel through other people and, you know, you're still going to be close to them. Like they'll still be around. Their, their spirits are still around you. You know what I mean? Like you can still co connect with them. And like I said, half of them are probably here. Some of them are here and some of them you'll meet in this lifetime. So it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. Like you're not you're not going to spend your life alone or anything like that. You know, even though it feels like it in the moment, it's like you, you will have true love. You will have the the connections you've been trying to manifest. You know what I mean? Some of you need to get out and, and be more social, though, is what I'm feeling. Like, some of you are, like, not putting yourself in a position to meet people. But but anyway, I just wanted to say, like, I feel like your spirit guides, yeah, like, they wanted they wanted you to, to know, like, right off the bat, like, this, this cycle is ending. These karmic cycles are ending. Something's shifting. So you are going to finally have, like, the happiness you've been wanting, you know. Some of you do have to manifest it, though. Some of you do have to really take your power back and, and step out of your comfort zone and go you know, live your best life and go meet people. But anyway, your spirit guides wanted me to also, it looks like they also wanted to kind of look into why that energy happened, like what, what went wrong here. So I feel like, I feel like there was miscommunication with somebody and that miscommunication, maybe you came off as angry, they came off as angry, but whatever it was, the miscommunication um, or just like lack of communication, put someone in their head and made them overthink, overanalyze, self-sabotage, which kind of does make sense if this is a twin flame connection, because keep in mind that a twin flame is pretty much your mirror. So it twin flames are really triggering. They'll show you all the parts of yourself that you don't want to see. They'll show you the ugliest parts of yourself. So it's like there was some kind of argument or there's some kind of silence or miscommunication, ghosting that put someone in their head and made them sabotage this and try to control this. You know, like someone was like, screw this energy. I'm going to take control. Someone was pissed. But there's some kind of truth that's coming out. Yeah. True love, potential life partner. This is an energy I'm seeing for a few of my energy groups, actually, that there's truth coming out. Because a lot of people right now, it's not just Scorpio. It's like there's a lot of people right now that I'm noticing are ending karmic cycles. Like that's like a really heavy collective energy for all the zodiacs is ending there's two different timelines so a lot of people are ending karmic cycles they're ending karmic relationships friendships like old jobs like all the stagnant energy it's like a it's like a, a it's like a a psychic flood like a like imagine in the astral realm it's like this flood that just comes in um it's just clearing everything up. So there's a lot of old energies being washed away and a lot of new energies coming in. So don't be surprised if you end up in a new job, a new living situation uh, with a new person. But um, but there's some kind of truth coming out here that two people were kind of like not seeing eye to eye. But I think that they're going to realize that this is true love. Yeah, someone's going to have the courage and assertiveness to move forward towards you. After a period of reflecting, some of them paused. Some of them are waiting for you too. It's like either you waited for them or they waited for you to reach out. Like someone was like praying you would reach out. Like they, someone was hurt. I get hurt feelings. Like there was something that was said here that I think hurt someone's feelings or made them, because I see like a shift. Like I see like a very pure loving relationship, but then I see like a, a shift where someone kind of took control back. Someone was like, nah, screw that. Like there was some kind of, some kind of energy shift for some of you, this was a toxic person and you took your control and your power back. And that was a positive thing. And now that you've done that and you're focusing on your power on, you know, on, you know, uh, on work, career, hobbies, like psychic work, your spiritual path, you're going to be rewarded for that with your true love. You know, you have someone new coming in. For others, I feel like this was your person. And you probably know which which is which. There's two stories here. For others, I feel like this was your twin flame. Um, and, and everything was good. Like, this would be like, there wasn't any red flags. Like, you guys felt good. But there was some kind of argument based on miscommunication. There was something there. And, and someone got their feelings hurt. But now it's like, there was like a period of silence where someone kind of stepped back and paused 
and they just waited for you to reach out and they waited they were hoped that you would reach out and i think that someone's having like an epiphany i'm getting a lot of epiph epiphany energy in general with this um with with this uh mercury retrograde energy that's that's another collective energy i've been picking up and if this resonates and you want a private reading, like I said, just send me an email. Donations are appreciated. My donation link is below. Um, please subscribe if it resonates. So we have waiting, hoping, praying. We have fast-moving energy, chaos, sudden turn of events. We have cold, guarded, and distrusting. Tell me more about this cold, distrusting energy. Willpower, strength, and confidence. Passion, romance. Yeah, someone's choosing passion and romance. I feel like someone... Some of you are dealing with a Taurus because I felt like this... This is like similar Taurus energy too. But I feel like somebody was like waiting for you to reach out and they're realizing that you're not going to. <laughs> um, and they're just taking, they're, they're just getting in this energy of like willpower, strength, confidence, and choosing passion and romance. You know, even though someone, someone, either you or them, someone's un, unaware of how the other person feels. There's like a really, there's like an awkward energy here where it's like someone does not know how the other person feels. They're like, I don't know if, if he or she is completely over it. I don't know if they miss me. I'm like, someone's just kind of in the dark when it comes to this. But someone's been waiting for this to, to move. And I feel like. I feel like there is movement coming in because there is nostalgia here. Yeah. Toxicity, red flags, hidden motive, mental instability. For some, this is not someone you want to give another chance to, though, because like I said, there's two different stories here. Some, this is like an abusive person that you cut out or like a, like a psychic vampire type. And, you know, this is a warning from your spirit guides that they're going to pop back up during Re Mercury Retrograde, possibly, or they're thinking about it. They're you know, they're in your energy field where they're thinking about you. They're trying to manifest you. Some of them are doing witchcraft on you and they might be popping back up. There's two very different stories. I mean, it's similar energy, but I just want to say that there's two different stories here. So for some of you, yeah, this is someone that's mentally unstable. This is someone that's toxic. This is someone that has hidden motives. Like they want, want, they want money. They want sex. There's some kind of red flags. There's some kind of toxicity there, but they're missing you. They're nostalgic for you. Even though this relationship is over, even though it's not going anywhere, you, you took your power back. You, your spirit guides are so proud of you because you set boundaries in ways that you never set boundaries before. You're like, screw you. No, I'm not doing this anymore. You got out of an abusive connection that your spirit guides were worried you were not going to get out of. They were worried that, you know, they, they were worried for you. They were really scared for you. And you really, you know, they supported you. That You have a lot of spirit guides supporting you and loving you. You have a lot of a support around you. You really do. And some of them just felt like you were just not going to get out of this connection. They were worried about you. And they're really proud of you because, like, you you had this push where you you got out of this connection. Like, you blocked this person or you just, you changed your number. Like, you, you put them in their place and you said, you know what, enough is enough. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to put myself through this. You know, mental abuse, gaslighting, physical abuse, whatever it was, you just said no more. And you took your power back and now you're, you're, you're lonely, but like, you're also happy because you have a sense of freedom and you're li like, you're starting to, you're, you're getting past this. You're in limbo, but you're getting out of limbo and you're going to have happier days ahead in the near future, you know, this year for sure. And yeah, yeah, you're, you're focusing on career, on hobbies, on your passions. Maybe you couldn't pursue those passions with this person because they put you down or they were just toxic or they just took up so much of your time and energy that you were too depressed to pursue these things. And now you are pursuing your spiritual path. You're getting back on your psychic path. Maybe some of you, it's like there was like religious differences, like they didn't support that path. And, or like they just thought like witchcraft or psychic work was silly or something like that. And now that you, you're not tied down to that old muggle, you can free yourself to, to go ahead and start, you know, buying a pendulum, buying tarot cards, buying, um, you know, cleansing materials, setting up your altars, like doing, you know, you know, worshiping gods, goddesses, uh, angels, you know, fairy spirits, dragons, whatever, whatever it is. It's like you're you're able to pursue your magic, your craft, your passions, your your art now. For some, it's for some, it's like art projects or it's creativity, hobbies, you know, take it as it resonates. But it's like your your energy is freed up because you're putting yourself first. You're choosing yourself and 
your spirit guides are really happy and really proud that you're choosing yourself and that you're you're going down your spiritual path and you're not letting this toxic person or anyone else for that matter get you off your spiritual path again. So it's a really beautiful energy. For others though, I feel like for others though, I feel like this and you would know. Like that like you would probably know if this person was toxic. This would be someone that like you knew it was coming for a while that they needed to go. You know what I mean? Like your spirit guides were telling you like you didn't you wouldn't have, I don't think you would have felt like this was a twin flame. I think maybe in the beginning you might have felt it, but like towards the end, you're like, nah, this person is like, they don't love me. Like they don't, they don't want, they don't like that I'm a witch. They don't like that I'm a psychic. They don't like that I'm um, spiritual. They don't like that I'm artistic. They don't like that I'm weird. They don't like how I dress. They don't like this. They don't like that. You know, it was someone that was dom dominant and controlling. So you would have felt that energy. You're like, nah, this is not my twin flame. Like, you might have felt like it for a while, but then at the end, you're like, nah, this is someone who, like, like a karmic test that tried to take me off my path. Like, you, you would be like, nah, this is not my person. I know this. This is not does not resonate with me. I don't feel like I can be my true self. I don't feel happy. I don't feel free. I've lost my free spirit being with this person. Like, like you would know. Um, but for others... For others, just for a few of you, I feel like this actually was a twin flame. But like I said, you're going to know which story is yours. It's going to be really apparent, I feel. But for others, for those of you that like this person was not really toxic or anything, but there was just some kind of miscommunication because of the twin flame triggers. Like this is like a normally a good person. This would not be someone that gaslights you, not someone that verbally or physically abuses you. None of that. This would be like a, a, a relatively healthy relationship. But, you know, just arguments here and there or like miscommunication here or there. But basically someone got their feelings hurt. And now they're nostalgic, though, and they're wanting to come back around because, you know, they they waited for you to reach out and you're not. So now they're reaching out. But someone's reaching out is the basic energy, whether this is a toxic person or this is your twin flame. Um, I think that, you know, intuitively who this is already. But um, either way, someone's someone's going to reach out. You know what I mean? And some of you, it's it's telling you to put up your psychic shield. Some of you, if this if you're in that energy group where it's, you know, um, I mean, it's all the same energy group, but there's two, sometimes there's there's two different stories or whatnot. But if you're in that group, if you're not in that that section of the group or whatever, that it's toxic, then it's kind of a warning from your spirit guides. Like, hey, your little kitty spirit guides here are saying you know, and it's 20, it's 22 minutes, 22 seconds in. So numbers might be, synchronicity might be, might be relevant for you right now. You know, pay attention to the synchronicity. Pay attention to your, your spirit group, to your spirit guides too. And I feel like, I feel like some of you, it's like kind of like a, like a warning, like, Hey, you might want to, you might want to put some protection up. You might want to, um, kind of do like a, like a mental shield, like kind of visualize yourself being protected because there might be someone kind of lurking on the sidelines, kind of watching you, thinking, okay, well, they haven't reached out, so I want to reach out. Yeah, there was a power struggle. There was a power struggle, some kind of deception. Could be third-party deception as well. Some kind of codependent energy here. Yeah, it's being cleared up. Whatever it is, it's being cleared up. You know what I mean? Like dreams, visions, telepathy. Like a lot of you feel alone, but if you go inward and connect with your spirit guides, you're going to see that you're not alone. And I know it's hard. I, I get that it's hard, but it's like your, your spirit guides are not asking you to like be alone or anything. They just want to make sure that you invite the right people into your life. For those that let go of an old person, like you did not want to be alone, but you made the decision, you know what? I don't want to be abused. I don't want to be in this energy anymore. And now you're kind of in limbo where it's like you're pursuing art projects or magic or hobbies or whatever else. And you're like, okay, I love this. I'm happy. But am I going to be alone now? Your spirit guides are reassuring you like, no, they are going to bring you new love. If, that, if that's your story where you had to cut someone toxic out, but now you're like single and you don't really have anyone that you're close to, your spirit guides are saying, don't worry. Like, you know, you, you will have, when you least expect it, you will meet your person. You will have faded, like this faded encounter. Um, when you're not even looking for it, it will just, it'll just come in quickly and sweep you off your feet. But put yourself out there too. Put yourself in positions where you can meet people. Cause I'm getting that some of you, not all of you, but some of you like go to work and come home and that's all like you, you maybe go to the grocery store or maybe like you order Instacart or whatever, but it's like, you don't really do much. Like you just kind of, and I get it. It's hard. It's hard to get yourself to go out. Like it's really, it, it is hard. I get it. But some of you, it's like you're not putting yourself in the position to meet people. So that kind of needs to be cleared up. New perspective. Vulnerability. Yeah. 
you have really good energy. Your spirit guides are basically just wanting you to know that you're going to be okay. Because some of you have been, like, confused and you're like, damn, like, I'm a good person. Like, I'm always loyal. I'm always the one that gets the short end of the stick. I'm always, you know, I why, did, why does this keep happening to me? You know what I mean? And your spirit guides are saying, like, you're going to be okay. Like, you did the right thing. Um, they're not going to let you be alone. They're not going to let you just die alone. Some of you are like, some of you that's going through your head where you think you're just going to die alone. And your spirit guides are saying, like, I'm feeling like for this group, it's like, they're saying, no, you're not. Like, they're going to, they're not going to let you be alone. You have your spirit group, your soul group um, that's here with you. And then they're trying to bring in this love, whether this is your twin flame or this is a new person. Like I said, there's two different stories. For some, it's a twin flame you got in an argument with or whatever, but now they're, you know, they're tired of waiting. Someone's tired of waiting for you to reach out. Someone is, someone is thinking that you, someone thought that you would reach out and you didn't. So now they're going to reach out to you is what I'm feeling. But like I said, for some that's a twin flame that was just kind of hurt. Like maybe you said something that hurt their feelings and so they wanted to pout. Like someone's pouting is kind of what I'm getting. And this could be, you know, take it as it resonates because this could be like a best friend or someone else. But someone's like pouting and like they're being like, maybe someone was being like passive aggressive with you. And you're like, this person's energy just feels weird. Like it feels like they're mad at me, but they weren't really saying much. And you were just kind of like confused. And now this person's like damn it, like, what are you going to get through your head that I'm, that I'm mad? Like, I was trying to sulk over here. Why didn't you chase me? And it's like, well, you're not a mind reader. Like, you know, some of them have been pouting. Some, some people have been, some of these people in your life, like a best friend, an ex, whoever has been pouting and they're tired of pouting because you're not noticing that they're pouting. You're living your best life. You're doing whatever. Um, or, you know, maybe they just, maybe there was like something that you said that hurt them. And instead of clarifying, they just kind of isolated. And now they're wanting to come back around. But like I said, for some of you, this is a toxic person that needs to be cut out. But for others, this is actually a really positive person. This is like a twin flame connection where there was just some immaturity on there in the, in the past where it's like they were hurt. And they were the type that when they got hurt, they would just kind of isolate and assume the worst instead of communicating and clearing things up. And this was a really important karmic lesson for them. Because they saw that pouting and sulking didn't work. Isolating when their feelings are hurt did not work. Like, it didn't, it didn't work. You didn't chase them. You didn't baby them. You're like, like, they had to step up and come to you and communicate their feelings. Like, you're kind of teaching them. You're not even doing anything. You're just, you're just kind of chilling. You're just in your goddess or your god energy. Just, like, living your best life. Or starting to live your best life. You're on that path. You're going. It's where you're going, you know? But some of them, it's like you taught them an important karmic lesson by not even doing anything, just by your silence, by not entertaining them, throwing a tantrum or being silent when you could tell their feelings were hurt. Like maybe they got distant and you felt like something was off, but you didn't know what it was. And this could be like a best friend or something. This could be like a friend where it's like you said something like you really called, you were, were forward with them. You called them out on something and your spirit guides were proud of you for that. They are, they are whatever it was. But like this person was like pouting and expecting you to notice. And now they're, they're being, they're learning a karmic lesson about having to just, you know, step into their, you know, step into their own power and, um, communicate like an adult if they're upset about something, you know what I mean? Like they're realizing the pouting is not going to work, you know? So someone was waiting for you to reach out first. Someone was waiting for you to apologize or reach out, like message, call them, and you didn't, and now they're reaching out to you. But like I said, for some people, that's a toxic person that's pouting that you need to continue to let go of. Like, you did the right thing letting go of them, like, and you know that. But for others, this could be, you know, take it as it resonates. For others, this was a twin flame connection, I feel, or a very deep soulmate connection where this person was healthy for you. Like, like you guys actually were good together. They didn't gaslight you. They didn't put you down. They didn't abuse you. They didn't use you. They didn't need something from you all the time. This was like, they gave to you as much as you gave to them. Like this was a mutual healthy relationship, but there was just some kind of miscommunication and maybe they're like a good person, but just a little immature when it comes to communication. So they're kind of throwing a, a little pouty fit right now. But, um, but, but whatever the story is, you know, you know, your story, you need to trust your intuition when this comes back around to decide if you want to give this a chance or not. But your spirit guides are wanting you to know you're not going to be in this pain forever. Like your life is getting better. You're coming out of the dark night of the soul, out of that shadow phase finally. So, you know, this year is going to be all about hobbies and the rest of this year is all about, um, you know, your spiritual path, your psychic work, hobbies, art projects, music, 
um, just your passion, just doing the things that love, doing the things that, that bring your spirit to life, you know, and connecting more deeply with your soul group. So I hope that resonates. Um, yeah, please like, share, subscribe, email me if you want a reading. Thanks.